Uh, tonight, we're going to be right dividing the Word of God uh, as we talk about um, faith healers. How many of you love watching them on TV? Don't raise your hand. And, um, but, uh, man, they're all over the place, aren't they? And uh, I, I've had a lot of questions about that lately. And uh, they use the word uh, apostolic. Uh, and, uh, of course, that comes uh, from the word apostle. And, but when we're rightly dividing God's word, um, we got to do just that. And there are a lot of people who make a lot of claims. And, uh, but I believe that every person's claim, every person's action, ought to be done in view of God's word. And a lot of people make a lot of claims, and there's a lot of hoopla, and there's a lot of things that go on. But church, I think we ought to be intelligent about it, and I think we ought to do it biblically. And uh, tonight's message, next week's message, will help us do that. I think it'll be an interesting study for you, uh, as it has been for me. But look at 2 Timothy 3 as just a kind of a jumping point. And uh, I want you to go to verse 13. So if you need a handout, raise your hand. If not, let's just go to God's Word. 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, look at verse 13. The Bible says this. It says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived seducers someone who lures another person in the bible says that they will get worse and worse notice verse 14 paul's charge to timothy was but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them Folks, you can't learn something if you aren't studying it. Would you say amen there? And it's important for us to be in God's Word so we can learn it. Verse 15. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Of course, we're very familiar with these verses. You could quote them. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. That means teaching, obviously. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. It is amazing to me how Christians can be easily duped into believing a lot of things that they see whether because there are large crowds that are drawn or because of the words that may be used or whatever. But I think it's important that we always bounce things off and look at them through the lens of God's Word. If someone proclaims to be a teacher of God's Word, if they proclaim to be a preacher of God's Word, if they proclaim to be a, a spokesperson for God's Word, you and I have an obligation, and that is to... Be in God's Word and make sure that what they say is true and that what they say is validated and that what they say has merit to it and that they are not adding to or taking away from Scripture. It's important. And uh, I'd like for you now to look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. You probably won't have to go far. Look at verses 3 and 4. I don't even have to turn the page. Maybe you do. The Bible says... For the time will come that they will not endure sound doctrine. That word doctrine means teaching. Everyone say teaching. Boy, isn't that true today. We want a funny story. I want a grandma story. I want a fishing story. I want something that makes me feel good. I want something that encourages me, preacher. I want something that just uh, makes me laugh a lot. And there are times for that. But there will come a time, the Bible says, that people will not endure sound doctrine. The word endure means to put up with. They won't tolerate it. That's why so many people flock to the entertainment-driven churches today. That's why there's so much uh, 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 on the ecumenical movement why people rather be entertained than taught God's Word. And God's Word has told us this and has forewarned us that this would come. Look at verse 3. For the time will come where they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust. I don't want what the Bible says. I want what I want. What's in it for me? 
What's going to please me? And look at it. How do they do it? Shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Now that does not mean uh, the Bible sometimes um, in the original text um, does not put words uh, uh, they don't put words in the way that they translate in English. They uh, sometimes the words are in front of other words. Sometimes the subject comes after the verb. Sometimes uh, uh, what it's preceding doesn't always work. And 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 so you have to understand the context. And what it is saying is the teacher isn't the one having itching ears. It's the student having the itch, itching ear, and the student wants to be scratched in the right place. You ever had an itch you just couldn't get to? And you had to get some help. And maybe it was your wife, maybe it was your husband, maybe it was your friend. When they hit the right spot, you're like, oh, yeah. Ooh, that's good. You know, you, you, you scratch your dog and, or, or, and it, man, they'll get that leg going. Or, you know, that cat will just kind of lock up. You know, it's just, and you got them. And there are Christians who are just like that. I only want to hear what is comfortable. I only want to hear what makes me feel good. I only want to hear what benefits me. Paul said it very clearly. Look at verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from what? I don't want the truth. I want this, and he tells us what they want, and shall be turned into fables. You know what a fable is? It's a story. It's a lie. It's amazing to me how God's Word is so accurate. Folks, this book is not outdated. It's right on time. This is a timeless book. It's God's book. That in itself should hold merit to me and you. I believe that God holds the answers or answers to man's questions. He always has and he always will. It's important for us to know that. It's important for us to rightly divide God's word. So let me talk about this for a moment if I could. Um, in your handout, we have learned in previous studies and uh, in 2012, uh, I think about in the middle of the year on Sunday night, uh, on Sunday night uh, I did a series on uh, the witnesses of the resurrected Christ. And you can go online, you can go get those, and you can listen to that. I did a whole study on that. How do we know that the resurrection is real? I think I did around Easter, and it went on for several weeks. And uh, how do we know that he is who he, is, who he says he is? How do we know his claims to be true? How do we know that he's risen? No man has ever said that, made those claims. Uh, um, uh, most people uh, think of him as a lunatic. He either is a lunatic, a liar, or he is Lord. And, uh, and so how do we know that? And we studied through that. But through that series and through that, I gave you that the true apostle had two primary characteristics. I want to give them to you tonight because this really sets this up. And uh, so there are two primary characteristics of an apostle. And by the way, those who, who claim to heal today, those who claim to have the power of healing today call themselves an apostle. They don't say, they don't necessarily come out and say, well, I have apostolic gifts. What the, well, they may say that, but they uh, generally come out and saying that they are a faith healer and that it's all by faith and it's by faith of the individual. And so regardless of whether their power is enough or not, if it's not enough, then it must have been a lack of faith on the individual's or recipient's part. But we've got to understand what an apostle is. So in your handout, uh, if you were a true apostle of Christ, uh, there are a few characteristics. Number one, they had actually seen the resurrected Christ, okay, physically, after his resurrection from the dead. Would you write that in? Write in the word seen. Everyone say seen. Now, I may not be the sharpest knife in the drawer, and all my, all my puppies may not bark all the time, but I do know this. There is nobody that is living today that has seen the resurrected Christ. Can I hear an amen on that? Okay. Well, we got a problem then, just with number one. But number two, 
They demonstrated the validity of their apostleship through the manifestation, notice that, of miraculous signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. So, I want us to look at some scripture and uh, just to validate this. And so, uh, you know that it's not the pastor's opinion or just something he's saying. I want you to go to 1 Corinthians 15, if you would. Jump there with me now. 1 Corinthians 15. I'm using a new Bible, something that uh, I have not wanted to do. And uh, I love my worn out, duct taped Bible. I do. I love that. And that's worn out. I, I can literally get to pages just by where they are in my Bible. And uh, so I, I probably won't get there as fast as you do, but I'm doing my best to break this thing in. So, and, uh, but I'm thankful uh, that I had another Bible to go to. But uh, 1 Corinthians 15, would you look at it with me? Verse 4. Uh, all these references should be in your handout so you can look at at a later date. And that he was buried, the Bible says, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. Verse 7. After that he was seen of James, then all of the apostles. And last of all he was seen of me. Well, who's me? Who's writing this? The Apostle Paul. He says, also, as of one born out of due time. We've discussed that and uh, learned about that. For I am the least of the apostle, that I am not meet. That means fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. Paul saying, man, I didn't even belong one of these. I shouldn't even belong in this. I'm a, I, I am a Jew, but, but yeah, I was, uh, I was apart from that. I was a persecutor. Yet Jesus Christ sought me out to be an apostle to the Gentile nation. And here we have evidence. Listen, it wasn't just one. It was hundreds of people who saw the risen Christ. Now listen, folks, if someone died today and there was a resurrection, you went to the graveside and whoop, that person came out. There wouldn't be 500 witnesses. There would be all of Martinsville coming to watch the show. And I'm saying to you, no one would doubt it. No one would try to circumvent the truth of that. But folks, when it comes to God's Word, when it comes to His inerrant, infallible, inspired Word of God, they try to cut Jesus out of the picture, cut His deity out, cut His claims out. Why? Because they can't handle the truth. Because the truth is you've got to deal with the sin in your life. And Jesus died for sinners. And He rose again to give you eternal life. And that's just not what we want. We want something funny. We want something cute. And they don't want to deal with that. But the Bible says, contrary to what you believe, my friend, the Bible says that he was seen of many. So, obviously, the Bible is true, and uh, what his claims are, are true. Now, go to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. We're going to be all over the Bible tonight. So, you just might as well get ready. Wear your fingers out for Jesus tonight, okay? And uh, let's get in that Bible. Let's dig in. Hebrews chapter 2. And look at verse 3 and 4. If you're there, say amen. All right. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by them that heard him, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. How do we know that he's the Messiah? Because when Christ came, he did not even start his earthly ministry to about 30. He didn't even start doing those types of miracles. But he did that because the Jews, the Bible says, require a... Oh yeah, you know your Bible. He says, I came not only in word, but I came in deed and I showed you who I was. And the Bible keeps confirming that over and over. Would you go to Mark 16, 20? Mark 16, 20. This is, this is so good. I hope you're enjoying this. I didn't even start it. I'm already enjoying it. It is so good. The Bible says, Mark 16, 20. And they went forth. I'll wait for you. Mark 16, 20. 
The Bible says, And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word. How did he do it? How did he confirm his claims? Very simple. With signs following. Then it says, Amen. Amen? <laughs> well, it says, Amen. Amen. So you amen it. If I keep doing that, will you keep saying it? <laughs> and uh, we'll just keep going. Look at 2 Corinthians 12, 12, and then we'll move on. All right? 2 Corinthians 12, 12. These are the two characteristics, of course, uh, of an apostle of Christ. And the 2 Corinthians 12, 12. Let's look at that. Then we'll move forward in your handout. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians 12, 12. Truly, the signs of an apostle will wrought among you in all patience and signs and wonders and mighty deeds. How did you know if they were an apostle? Well, it's very clear. They saw the resurrected Lord. And secondly, man, they performed miraculous signs and wonders. Every one of them. So, there are men today, and women I should say, who claim to be an apostle and have these apostolic sign gifts, were they evident in the Bible? Absolutely. Uh, did God use them? Absolutely. But they were for a time and they were for a purpose. And But there are men and women who claim to have this same uh, type of apostolic sign gifts. And you see them on TV. And it, by the way, it brings huge ratings and it brings huge huge crowds. People flock to these people. And man, do they fill the buckets up with money when they come down the aisle. And, 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 it, and it only makes sense why. If you were hurting and, and if you had a need and, and, and you truly in your mind believe that, that, that this would happen and this person had this gift, you'd give any amount. And when they ask for their needs to be met financially and that this thing doesn't, co doesn't come for free and, man, we had to bring our people in and da-da-da and move all this in and cameras and all this stuff, man, your heart just gets moved naturally. And so through your emotions, man, you're like... I I, I would give it all so I could walk again. I'd give it all so I could see again. I'd give it all so I wouldn't hurt so bad. And, and so they do. And, and the truth is, in your handout, it seems that the number one gift that they purport is to have this apostolic gift of healing. Would you write that in? If you'd notice, when you watch TV or you listen on the radio and you watch this, it supersedes preaching. Little bit of Bible, whole lot of healing. Little, little, little bit of Bible, whole lot of singing. Why? I got to work it up. I got to get you in a frenzy. And, 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 and by the way, I, I'm going to bring one to the surface in just a minute that does this. And, and I'm going to tell you where he studied from. And I'm going to tell you, they're, they're, there's chanting that they do. And they use certain songs and use certain words, songs that we even sing. But they do it in a manner that is even hypnotic. And, and, and they teach you how to learn how to do this. The books that he studied from, the person that mentored him, uh, was a person who was a professional hypnotist and, and, and on their team. And when they take uh, to these big crusades and stuff, they, they bring hypnotists that screen the crowd when they come down the aisle. Hey, the media doesn't show this junk. The media doesn't talk about this stuff, but it's so true. And, 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 they, and they flood the aisles with this stuff, and they're screened, and, and, and yet you never see the people who go home still hurting. You only see the people throwing their canes around and, and throwing their wheelchairs around. And by the way, all of that is a fallacy. Now, I do not... Uh, for a moment think that with that many people praying, with that many people coming, with that many people believing and desiring something, that there aren't people who do, who, who don't get healed. I, believe, I do believe there are people who get healed. But I'm going to tell you this, it has nothing to do with man. Hello? Thank you. That deserved an amen right there. Has nothing to do with man or some guru who gets up uh, and, and, and spins himself around and, and, and has this uh, oratory skills and, and, and is good at what he does. And because he's flamboyant or charismatic, has nothing to do with him. Has everything to do with God. 
But I do have a problem, and you should have a problem, that Christians are duped in this. And there are hundreds of ministries. There are ministries locally that do this. There are ministries that surround our area that do this. And I want to read you just an article that was sent to me in the mail. It was coming out of a, uh, it came out of a uh, magazine that uh, is free. You can pick it up and they pay for these ads. And her, her location is uh, somewhere in North Carolina. And uh, she gives you a big phone number uh, to call. And by the way, it's free by donation. Okay. Let me just read it to you. Has someone put a spell on you? Are you full of bad luck? Bloom, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark depression and added misery. If I had no bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Do you have enemies that get you down? Do you have a strange sickness that doctors can't find? Are your nerves destroying you? Yeah, I had one and you got on it. Do you always take one step forward and ten steps backwards? Man, this is sounding good. Do you want a loved one return to you? What kind of hocus pocus junk is this? Do you feel lonely because you lost your love to another person? Then see Reverend Williams today. Why suffer? Why worry? Let Reverend Williams help with all your problems. Now, on a side note, don't confuse Reverend Williams with palm readers. The Reverend Williams is an ordained minister of God. Not in my book you aren't. You are of a satanic influence, my friend, and you are not of Christ. You are not apostle of Christ. You do not represent my King of kings and Lord of lords. You represent your own endeavors. You represent your own lust. And you represent them having, uh, wanting to have itching ears and tickling those uh, who have itching ears. That's what you represent. And then she puts her number and says, Nicole, now for help. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Look up here. People flock to this stuff. And I'm going to tell you something. Listen, before we get on the bandwagon, I'm not mad at anybody. I hate Satan. And I hate his plan. And I hate his scheme. And here's what I hate worst of all. That the church of God, the body of Christ, believes this garbage. Satan knows where to shop. Go to Reverend Williams for all. You got bad luck? Ain't hit the lottery? Go see Reverend Williams. I'm going to tell you something. Now listen to me. If you hurt bad enough, if someone's hurt you bad enough, you know what you may do? You may just make that phone call. And they know it. God help a church that ever puts an ad out like that. I want to know where Jesus is at in this article. Did you hear anything about Jesus? The Bible. Him being our hope. Him being our life. Us being called unto him. And him being our everlasting life. Him being our peace. Hey, you see that anywhere. That's not in here at all. Yet people believe this stuff. And, and, and listen, we're not here judging people. I, 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 I don't judge someone's heart, but I'm going to tell you something. I can judge people's actions. You put it in writing, sister, I can read it. And, and we don't judge people's heart, but I'm going to tell you something. We have a right. We have a right to handle people's mishandling of the truth. And we must do that if we believe God's word. And if you believe God's word is true. And if you believe it to be the final authority for your life. You cannot tolerate these lies. You can't tolerate these half truths. You can't tolerate any deception that Satan may mail you, email, text you, Facebook you, Twitter you. You got to stand up for what is right and the truth. And say man this is of Satan. It's not of God. And I do believe that. Listen. 
I have no doubt that Reverend Williams, I mean, she put a picture on there, that she has a sincere heart to want to help people. And in her mind, she, she really wants to help people. There's no, she's probably not trying to hurt people. She, 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 but there are charlatans out there that uh, are, are trying to make a mockery or make a monetary uh, enterprise out of people. Now, now, may I say this to you tonight, that the charlatans are not only in the apostolic faith, they're also in the Baptist faith too. There are a lot of Baptist crooks out there. They just ain't an independent Baptist. Southern Baptist, free will Baptist. I'm saying just because one slaps a Christian bumper sticker on their car doesn't mean they're with Jesus, okay? Like that would be saying the same thing because I live in a garage, garage that makes me a car. No, that doesn't. And I'm saying to you that multitudes of people with sickness and the disease crowd into these auditoriums hoping to find deliverance from the infirmities and through the means of a faith healer. And make no mistake about this, it is a big money-making business. And I'm going to tell you that in just a moment. Probably the most well-known person is Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn lives in a multi-million dollar oceanfront mansion, drives a Mercedes-Benz uh, that is, uh, uh, is $80,000. He sports elaborate clothes from, from Versace to, to, to uh, names I can't even pronounce. And, uh, and, and I got this right off. And by the way, I, I printed out a transcript from an interview that the LA, LA Times did with him. So I'm not quoting anything I don't know. I'm quoting everything that was said and documented. You pull it right off yourself. He brought in right at $106 million in donation over the last two years. Now listen, I'm not against bringing in money. God help us. We all need it. And this church needs donations. And by the way, you ought to be extravagant givers. Uh, but we ought to be giving in the right manner. And we ought to be giving to the right work. But he was interviewed, and when he showed up for the interview, man, he rolled out with his entourage, rolled out with, with uh, uh, his uh, uh, playing with his phone. And by the way, even his phone had a uh, Mercedes-Benz emblem on it. And you can't see it right there, but his wedding band, and I'm all for a wedding band, that wedding band has his insignia on it, and it is about this thick and covers from knuckle to knuckle, and it is encased in multiple diamonds. Now, this is from his own mouth. Now, I'm not against those things, but I'm going to tell you something. How dare we? Let the cripple roll up to our feet and proclaim to heal them while we stay in hotel rooms that are two to three thousand dollars per night. And then send them right on down that aisle without them ever getting what they came for. While we go to our sealed homes and make and Pro, uh, make these uh, proclamations that it wasn't really us, but it was lack of faith on their part. I'm going to tell you something. God will not hold them without judgment of those kind of things. And we've learned and studied what sign gifts are and why they were there. They were there to validate the apostles. They were there to confirm new truth given to the apostles. They were ser there to serve as a sign for the nation of Israel. Uh, and, um, and, and, and that is all true. But folks, there are no apostles today. And you read about that in Acts 28. There's no re there is no reason for sign gifts today. We have God's completed word, and there is no d new dispensation. There is no new revelation of new truth. And, and, and I want to tell you something. God has never changed who he is, although he has changed what he does. And people often quote, yeah, let's get that picture off the screen. Quote this verse right here. Hebrews 13:8. And they will say this, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And I would say, amen. And they would say, well, uh, that, 
because God did it then, that's what God's doing now. My friend, you are uh, 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 misinterpreting God's holy word. You are not in the right context of God's holy word. This verse they draw out has a false conclusion that Jesus is working the same today as he did in the gospels and the Acts time period. This verse is dealing with God's character and who he is, not with his dealings with mankind. If you read any part of your Bible, you can see that God is doing different things in different time periods. Is he love? Absolutely. Is he merciful? Absolutely. Is he gracious? Absolutely. Is he long-suffering? Absolutely. But God dealt with Israel very differently than he has dealt with us. And I'm saying to you that when people make these kind of claims like Reverend Williams or Benny Hinn, then we've got to put them to a biblical test. And we got to match scripture with scripture. And we got to make sure what they're saying is what God says. And that we have got to make sure that we can discern this stuff and make sure that it's true and accurate. So, even in John 14, 12, in your handout, you can write this in. Jesus said that his apostles would actually do greater works than he did. Now, Jesus made this statement. He said... You are going to do greater works than I did. Well, faith healers today should exemplify the same biblical characteristics in their healing ministry that Jesus and the apostles did. If you're going to speak in tongues, then you ought to do it the Bible way. And by the way, they don't. If you're going to heal today, then you ought to do it the way they did it in the Bible. And by the way, they don't. And I'm going to prove it to you. If they're going to make these claims of healing power, then it should line up with Scripture. Don't you agree with me, church? It should line up. But we got to look at the characteristics, all right? So let me give you a few of them, or at least one or two. And if we have time, if not, that's fine. First of all, now I want you to write this in. Jesus and the apostles went to where the sick people were. Would you write that in? you got to remember this. If you're going to heal, if you're going to call yourself an apostle, which you can't, by the way, not biblically, but if you're going to make these claims, then may I just remind you and everyone else that Jesus and the apostles went to where the sick people were. Look at Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. This is an interesting study. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, the Bible says, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But where did he go? He went all about the cities. Jesus and the apostles went to where the sick people were. Look at Acts chapter 5. And by the way, all these references are in your handout. Acts chapter 5. Look at verse 15 and 16. Insomuch, Acts 5, 15 and 16. The Bible says, Insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. In your handout, Jesus went from city to city, Finding and healing sick people. He went from city to city, finding and healing sick people. But notice in your handout, the apostles went through the streets of Jerusalem, healing sick people. You know, the Bible does say go out in the highways and the byways. The Bible says go out 
ye into the world and preach the gospel. The Bible even said that even their shadows healed people. Folks, you don't see that on TV. Just your shadow. Come on. They went where the sick people were. Notice the Bible didn't say that they waited for the sick people to come to them. It didn't say that they got all together and put up a big tent. How thrilling it would be to have this gift, I would imagine. Imagine being able to go to the hospital and walk through the hallways and touch people that are sick and dying and heal them. Can you imagine that? Man, Miss Patsy, I can imagine you doing that. It just, yeah, that would be, that would, that would be good for you. And uh, you're so compassionate. You, you, you could do that. And uh, I mean, can you imagine going and, I mean, Everywhere you went, people are being healed. Would you ever be alone? Could you ever sleep? I mean, would anyone ever leave you alone? I, I mean, every time you'd go and make a hospital visit, well, they're checking out today. Why? I went and visited them. There wouldn't be any funerals. I mean, with the great transportation that we have, can you imagine going around and do this? Think about flying to the great diseased pockets of the world and walking through the crowds healing AIDS, cancer, and diabetes. Can you imagine that? Just going and doing that. See, isn't that what, what they're doing today? Nope. Not on your life. Why is it that faith healers are not hanging out at the nursing homes, hospitals, and the sanitariums? How come it's got to be 20,000? How come it's got to be 60,000? How come it's got to be in a great coliseum? How come you can't come to Martinsville Hospital? How come you can't come to Blue Ridge Manor? Won't you go ahead and help out Brother Ed before he goes on August the 1st. Won't you beat him to it? Won't you go ahead and make that happen so he doesn't have to get his leg amputated? I mean, if you've got the power, and if you're of God, and you're an apostle of Christ, then why don't you go to where the sick people are? Why is it that they rarely come out of their church buildings, auditoriums, tents, and coliseums to exercise this gift? And by the way, why do it in front of a camera? You ever ask yourself this question? I ask myself that all the time. Why on TV? I'll tell you why. Because at the end of the program, you're going to ask me for some money. Got to pay the bills, brother. They seem for the most part to exercise their gift in a controlled environment. Staged their way with people where they want them, according to their schedule, with their workers, prompting and screening the crowds. I believe this is fair in asking, don't you? I believe we should compare one's actions with the Scripture. And if you're going to proclaim to be an apostle of Christ and having healing, then you ought to be doing it the Bible way, and that is that Jesus and the apostles went to where the sick people were. Number two, this is the last one I'll give you tonight. Jesus and the apostles healed instantly. Would you write that in? Instantly. Look at Acts chapter 3. Shouldn't have to go far. Acts chapter 3. You know that this is the lame man who, uh, who, who came, and he was uh, lame from his mother's womb when he was born, okay? But I want you to jump down to, um, uh, go to verse uh, 7. All right, this is a lame man. It gives the uh, uh, kind of all that in the first part. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Now, I want you to look at chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Look at verse 32. Acts chapter 9, verse 32. And look at all the way through 35. 32 through 35. 
Here's Peter again. It came to pass as Peter passed throughout all quarters. He came down also to the saints which dwelt at uh, Lydda. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise and make up thy bed. And he rose, what? Oh, yeah. And all that dwelt at Lydda and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord. Now, there's a few other verses. You can look that up. But here's what people say. People say this. Now, look up here and we're done. People say, well, man, the Lord healed me and I'm getting better. No, you don't get better, my friend. It's instant. My back feels better. No, it don't. It gets whole. My arthritis, well, it doesn't hurt like it used to. Mm -mm, there is no such thing as arthritis. My tumor is shrinking. Mm -mm, no tumor. Uh, my cancer is in remission. My friend, it ain't remission. It doesn't exist. You see what I'm saying? When God heals, he heals instantly. And I would say to the people, say, well, all these things are happening. I would say, you know what? That's wonderful. And I'm glad that you feel better. But that is not a gift of healing as exercised by Christ and the apostle. What I'm saying to you is, yeah, God may be at work in your life, but it wasn't done by man. And when God, when he healed, when Christ healed and the apostles healed, it was instantaneous. The crippled guy that was lame from his mother's womb, you, know, you notice he didn't get up and start walking with a cane. He didn't work up into it. No one had to steady him. No one had to help him. Help him out of that chair. He don't need your help if God's doing it. The Bible says he immediately stood up and stood with them. He doesn't need your help. When God does it, he does it instantly and completely. Notice he started walking, the Bible says. He didn't crawl. Here's a man who's never walked. You'd think of a person that's never walked. They crawl before they walk. He didn't crawl. He walked. That's how God does it. Benny Hinn doesn't do it like God. Benny Hinn is not a spokesperson for God. I'm saying to you, if you're going to do it, do it God's way. He didn't have to warm up. There weren't stages to his healing process. And by the way, the crippled man didn't go to rehab. It happened instantly. Man, I'm getting through to you. You understand this? Hey, listen. If there are people who proclaim to be an apostle of Christ and have the gift of healing and have this sign gift, then they must remember, number one, Jesus and the apostles went to where the sick people were. Number two, Jesus and the apostles healed instantly. Thank God for that. I got four more I'm going to give you, but not tonight. All right? And I uh, hope that you'll come back for that. And let me tell you, there, I'm going to give you, listen to me, you got to come back. for. This. If you don't come back for this, you're going to miss some personal, not for me, but personal accounts of people who have gone on record and even who have, have had records tried to be given from these so-called faith healers. And I'm going to tell you what the results are. I'm going to give you personal accounts. I'm going to show you even a picture of one individual that, that was proclaimed to have been healed and what was said about him and what the actual results were. you got to come back. Now, I'm going to give you several accounts for that. Listen, all I'm saying to you is if you've tuned out the whole time, whatever someone says and they proclaim the name of Christ and proclaim to be a spokesperson for God, you need to verify everything that they say by the Scriptures. Please, be a Berean of God's Word. Be a student of of the scriptures and make sure that people hold this to truth not to their benefit 
to their own lust, not to their own personal endeavors, but so that they may glorify God. After all, He is the only one that deserves any praise and any glory. It's Jesus. But then why is there so much showism and shenanigans when you watch this? Because we like to see ourselves. I'm going to tell you, if you don't see that in the scriptures that I've gone over with you, man, they healed and went on. You don't see any fanfare, no autographs, no healing oil, no water, no sowing a seed. You don't see any of that. You just see Jesus going, healing the lame. You see the apostles doing that. Wow, that's what God was doing then. But what's God doing today? Well, we'll get to that later. But I'm glad you're here tonight. And so come back. And let's study this together. Bring some with you. With you. It'll help them grow in God's word. All right, let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for tonight. Uh, God, we just.